Welcome, Michelle. Thanks for uh, coming out today. Uh, you're the first guest for our uh, Christmas recording session series for 2021. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. Uh, so, our guest today, everyone, is uh, Michelle Weatherall. Michelle is an author, poet, and publisher. A native of Ottawa, Michelle grew up as an army brat living in Europe and Germany and specifically, and has since traveled extensively. He is 30 plus years in the print and publishing industry and he's the owner operator of Broken Keys Publishing. So Michelle, you introduced me to the term weird fiction just not that long ago when we were online. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about weird fiction and about some of the books that you've been writing? Weird fiction is a genre that primarily came out between the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. Um, it has elements of sci-fi, fantasy, and horror in it. But one of the things I like the most about it is when it originally came out in those at that time, it dealt with material that wasn't categorized yet. I mean, the printing industry hadn't solidified the whole concept of genres. And what's interesting with those authors in that genre is they simply wrote. And what I liked about that so much was that if we fall victim to putting ourselves into genres, we also, in my opinion, stifle our creativity. Because if I was to wake up tomorrow morning and suddenly decide I'm going to write romance, so everything I'm writing is already in that, I'm pigeonholed already. I like about that is the idea of simply writing and let it be categorized afterwards. It kind of lets that creative germ go free. Okay, and so poetry is the exception to that. When you start to write poetry, you uh, you usually, I'm guessing, have, because you do anthologies. Yeah. So you've got a book of anthologies that you're preparing to do, and you either write yourself or write with other people. Can you tell us about uh, some of your poetry? My, my own poetry? Sure. It tends to be, uh, it's not sunshine and lollipops. It tends to be a very darker in nature. But I find, what I find with poetry is that more often than not, it's very, um, it can be very therapeutical. Ultimately, you're working things out of yourself. Um, I've been asked before about whether I get nervous when it comes to book releases or interviews and whatnot. And I usually don't when it comes to writing, but when it comes to poetry, it's a whole different thing because it's very much a real part of yourself. Um, somebody picks up a story that you've written or a book and they don't care for it. Well, it's not the best thing, but it's not the end of the world. That same thing happens with poetry. It's a very different thing because it's incredibly personal. Okay, I understand. And you, um, you've done a lot of anthologies with other people. Can you talk about some of the? Well, don't leave any. You know, not to leave anybody out, but uh, what what it's been like working with other authors and putting together anthologies. Yeah, the, the first one we did was uh, in 2020. It was Thin Places and the Ottawa Anthology, and it dealt with local authors. And the topic of that particular release was short stories dealing with alternate universes, but not necessarily sci-fi. It was uh, genres that covered the whole spectrum. And it's interesting because you see drastically different perspectives and you see the talent we have in Ottawa. And I do think Ottawa and the region around it is rich in literary talent. It's just a matter of finding those avenues to get that those voices out. And that's one of the reasons why Broken Keys Publishing does like doing those anthologies. That was the first one. And the one we did this year was Love and Catastrophe Poetry. And it was a collection of 14 local poets dealing with the topic of love and loss during the catastrophes of 2020. And we tend to think of only COVID, but a lot of other things went down that year as well. And sometimes, oftentimes, I think poetry can be uh, a pulse of what was going on at that day and age too. So it kind of immortalizes those moments. Yeah. You know, you were talking about community and it reminds me, um, there's so many writers uh, groups on Facebook and of course there's North Rebel Writers Circle and, uh, you know, you've interacted with uh, a, lot, a lot of people in the North Rebel Writers Circle mm -hmm. to build a greater community of, uh, of Ottawa. So you have uh, people that are in Ottawa, people that are in North Grenville, it's, yep. it's sort of like the Eastern region yeah. that you talk to and, and talk about all things writing and guessing, okay. Um, so you've had a pretty productive year. I mean. The year before, you had a list of faces and words. Yes. And I'm like, there's one. Well, that's pretty good. This year, when it came out, it was uh, Book of the Year for Thin Paces, the Ottawa in Anthology, the best author, and the favorite favorite publisher. So that, that was something else yeah, that came out. It was, was that a surprise? It was year, very or? surprising yeah. to see that. I yeah. mean, I've been nominated several years over, and you go to the gala event, and 
don't really expect anything. This one was just one after another. But the irony of it was it happens in the middle of a pandemic when everything is locked down. So you're kind of going, really? Like, really? <laughs> yeah, celebrating with people has been very much online. That's and right. I think a lot of us, well, not me, but a lot of authors are, are meeting with each other more during the pandemic mm -hmm. to talk about their works. But you're not able to go to the book signings or That's the right. things that you typically would do, right? Um, so I'd like to talk about uh, a point. Can you point to a time when you first wanted to be a writer and uh, and publisher? And if you could go back in time, what would you tell yourself when you first started out? I don't know if I can pinpoint a time where I first wanted to be. But you know, I often get asked, "When did you start writing?" And really, I guess the real answer was, "When you have you not?" I mean, I always remember some way or another writing something. I mean, the earliest memory I have must have been in grade one. We had a project to do a short story, a very short story. I, don't, I think it was a page, one page limit or something like that. And I think I did two pages and I couldn't finish the story off, so I ended it with the to be continued. And then uh, the teacher read it in front of the class, including the to be continued part, and reassigned us another short story lesson. And I wasn't the most favorite kid in that class after that, simply because we've got more work to do. But I think being a writer is always there. It's that creative spark, and it's it, it it's it's in your very nature, and how it manifests is different. I think that's true with anything creative, whether it's music, whether it's uh, art, whether it's literature. It's it's always something that is there. We talk about the nature versus nurture element, and some of it yeah. might just be inborn, and and others might be you know for people meeting a favorite teacher or mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I have uh, another one. Do you have a dream foreign country destination that you'd like to visit and why? Uh, an alternative question if you don't like that one is uh, have you made or do you plan on making a literary pilgrimage someday? I do want to go see Providence, Rhode Island. I do want to see where Howard Phillips Lovecraft lived and actually passed away as well. Uh, it's not ridiculously far from where we are. It's something I want to do. Um, I don't think I can see it happening in the very near future because of everything going on with the pandemic and the lockdowns. And but that is definitely something I want to do. I want to see that. I want to go there. It might be a trip of my own because ultimately I think it's going to be a lot of architecture. I don't think it's going to be exciting in the sense that we tend to think of trips as being, but more information That's gathering right. yeah. and, uh, see and the checking places. out your beliefs and what you, what you know and comparing yeah. it with their oh, that's very that's, uh, that's really interesting um if you were to write a christmas or a new year's book what do you think it would be about an alternate question is uh if you could go into the past or the future um can you talk about what a favorite memory of Christmas is or what you would like to do for Christmas? I think for the Christmas, and I, I always got to get into the marketing mode because I tend not to do that, but I keep forgetting with the symbiote, the first novel, it actually ends on Christmas Eve. Oh. So it's not geared towards that, but the, the, the book actually finishes itself off on Christmas Eve and launches into a, the, what will become the following one at that point. So it's, it's closer to that. And when we get into the Christmas season, I really got to start marking that angle. Is it a Christmas book? Sure, it's a Christmas yeah. book. Let's go with that one. Now, there's a, a shortage of, there's a hard time getting books. Uh, because of COVID, there's a supply chain issue. Oh, yeah, they're getting printing. So if people want to get books, uh, yeah. they've got to make some plans early, I guess. Hey, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I work in printing as well, and some papers are backed up for months. So uh, there is there is going to be a slowdown in that, and when people look in to get their material printed or published, that's going to have. So I don't think it's going to be a severe effect, but it's definitely going to be an effect. So for the books we have in front of us, they're actually uh, they're in the library. So they've got the band on them that you're a local author and uh, your fiction wealth when they stop, and that's not a bad one, eh? Yeah, one. Whether all gets to wealth on the uh, on the binding, that's awesome. Um, so I'd like to move into your most recent work. Yep. Uh, it's releasing on the 30th of November. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about it and specifically what inspired you to write it and what it's about? Um, Down Darkened Corridors is the title of it. It's currently only going to be released on ebook and it's going to be released for free on November 30th. It's not for the light of heart. It's a very dark piece. Um, it opens up with, out of a lack of a better term, I'm going to call it an essay. It's kind of a self-reflection called The Corridor. Okay. And it's more about how I perceive myself fitting or not fitting into society around me. And that's the launching point into what follows is about five 
put um, poetry pieces. And again, going back to what I said earlier, about sometimes poetry can be very therapeutical. I mean, one of the darker pieces in it, and it's unique in the sense that I don't normally practice uh, free verse or open verse. The piece is called Purgation, and it is open verse, and I left it that way simply for the rawness of it. It deals with about 30 years ago, my mother had passed away, and she was left in an unmarked grave for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And it's because of my stepfather that that came about. And purgation is me putting a voice to that struggle, coming to terms with that. Now, my stepfather had passed away about six years ago, but it's, it's finding closure to that, finding a way of purging that out. So it's, it's again, like I said, it's not the only piece, but it really brings us into some darkened areas. Do you think you'd be triggering for a certain populace, or it's just you'd just be prepared for what you're? Uh... Well, I would just say be prepared for it. Okay. Um, like I said earlier, it's not sunshine and lollipops. It's not for the faint of heart. It's getting into dark areas, but there's a rich, richness to that as well because it's not just myself; it's other people. This is not a unique thing that we all experience, and it's something that, in some cases you can be given permission to people, it's okay to be there, it's okay to find yourself in these places. And there's an exit to those points too. I mean, you can't come to the light until you've gone through the darkness. So there is something enriching about that also. Okay, that's, I think that's a very important topic. I mean, we probably, all of us know um, families who, you know, like parents who've married late and, and, and then what that does to the to the kids of both sides. And, and there's a lot of issues out there. So I think it's uh, it's great that it was you're, that you're addressing it. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, and thank you for sharing with the writer's circle, you know, your process of writing. It's much appreciated. It's not a problem at all. Um, so I'd just like to thank everyone listening and the North Granville Public Library specifically for supporting local authors. And of course, Sierra Jones Martel for all of her help in the past couple of years. Michelle, um, have a Merry Christmas to you and uh, thank you for coming out today. Absolutely. Merry Christmas to you too. Merry Christmas.